My name is Sam Vaknin, and I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. People pleasers dread conflicts and wish to avoid them. They are conflict averse. Hence their need to believe that they are universally liked. People pleasers are always pleasant, well mannered and civil, but conflict averse people pleaser is also evasive, vague, hard to pin down, sometimes obsequious, and generally a spineless non entity. But here's the irony these very qualities are self defeating, as they tend to antagonize people rather than please them, at least in the long term. But conflict aversion is only one of several psychodynamic backgrounds for the behavior known as people-pleasing. Some people-pleasers, for instance, cater to the needs and demands of others as a form of penance, self-sacrifice, redemption. Many people-pleasers are codependents. They strive, strive to gratify their nearest and dearest in order to allay their own abandonment anxiety and the ensuing intense and at times life-threatening dysphoria. Codependent people pleasers say, if I'm nice to him, he won't break up with me, or if I cater to her needs, she won't leave me, or won't cheat on me. A few people pleasers are even narcissistic. Pleasing people enhances their sense of omnipotence, grandiosity. They seek to control and disempower their chargers, their beneficiaries. They say, she is so dependent, dependent on me, and she so looks up to me, that I can't avoid pleasing her or helping her. Even the pity of narcissistic people pleasers is a form of self-aggrandizement. Narcissistic people pleasers are likely to say, only I can make her life so much better. She needs me. Without me, her life would be hell. Narcissistic people pleasers are actually misanthropic altruists and compulsive givers. Watch the relevant videos on my channel. All people pleasers use a few common coping strategies. They are all dishonest. Disto dishonesty, lies, white lies, and not so white lies, are intended to avoid conflicts and unpleasant situations. Manipulation. People pleasers are manipulative that is meant to ensure desired, out desired outcomes, such as an intimate partner's continued presence. People pleasers seek to foster dependence in their beneficiaries, in their chargers, in the recipients of their largesse or their help. Codependent people pleasers leverage their ostentatious helplessness and manifest weaknesses to elicit the kind of behaviors and solicit the benefits that they end up for while narcissistic people pleasers aim to habituate their targets by bribing people with gifts, monopolizing their time, and isolating them socially. Then there is infantilization, displaying childish behaviors in order to gratify the emotional needs of overprotective, possessive, paranoid, narcissistic, and codependent individuals in the people pleasers' milieu. Finally, there is self-punishment, self-defeat and self-sacrifice. All these signal self-annulment in the pursuit of people-pleasing. I am not here, only my services are here. People-pleasers are a subset of a larger phenomenon, which I call pathological charming. Pathological charmers are mostly narcissists. The narcissist is confident that people find him irresistible. His unfailing charm is part of his self-imputed omnipotence. This inane conviction is what makes the narcissist a pathological charmer. <clears throat> the somatic narcissist and the histrionic flaunt their sex appeal, virility or femininity, sexual prowess, musculature, physique, training or athletic achievements. The cerebral narcissist seeks to enchant intellectual pyrotechnics. Many narcissists brag about their wealth health, possessions, collections, spouses, children, personal history, family tree, assets, in short, 
anything that garners them attention and renders both types of narcissists firmly believe that being unique, they are entitled to special treatment by others. They deploy their charm offensives in order to manipulate their nearest and dearest or even complete strangers and use them as instruments of gratification. Exerting personal magnetism and charisma become ways of asserting control and obviating other people's personal boundaries. The pathological charmer feels superior to the person he is captivating and fascinating. As far as he is concerned, charming someone means having power over her, controlling her, or even subjugating her. It is all a mind game, and possibly a power play. The person to be enthralled, to be captivated, is an object, a mere prop, and of dehumanized utility. In some cases, pathological charmer, charmers involve uh, the pathological charm involves more than a grain of sadism. It provokes in the narcissist a sexual arousal by inflicting the pain of subjugation of the beguiled, who cannot help but be enchanted. Conversely, the pathological charmer engages in infantile magical thinking. He uses charm to help man maintain object constancy and fend off abandonment, in other words, to ensure that the person he bewitched won't disappear on him suddenly. Some narcissists like to surprise people. They drop in unannounced. They organize events or parties unbidden. They make decisions on behalf of unsuspecting parties. They help compulsively and forcefully. This variety of pathological traumas believe that their mere presence guarantees the gratitude and delight of the intended targets of their generous and spontaneous campaigns. Pathological traumas react with rage and aggression when their intended targets prove to be impervious and resistant to their lure. This kind of narcissistic injury, being spurned, being rebuffed, makes narcissists feel threatened, rejected, and denuded. Being ignored amounts to a challenge to the narcissist's uniqueness, entitlement, control, and superiority. Narcissists wither without constant narcissistic supply. They shrivel like a flower without water and sunshine. When their charm fails to elicit narcissistic supply, they feel unarmed, non-existent, disintegrating, and even dead. Expectedly, they go to great lengths to secure a narcissistic supply. It is only when their efforts are frustrated that the mask of civility and congeniality drops and reveals the true face of the narcissist, a predator on the prowl.